So today, we created a full list of all the creatures in Grounded. It took a while. Obviously, I couldn't do all of them in one video, so today it will just be the Harmless Creatures. Uh, part one of a three-part series will cover where to find them, what they're weak to, and what you can make after you kill them. All the information I gathered was from the Grounded Wiki that you'll see behind me. It's a great resource, I recommend it, but the point of this video is to take all of this and turn it into an easy to digest video. It took a lot of work. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, consider liking and subscribing, but other than that, I'll, I'll let the video play. Peace out. So as we leave the base, the first little critter on our list is the aphid. The aphid can be found anywhere in the flower bed, the eastern flood zone, the grasslands, and around the oak tree. The only thing the aphid drops upon death is the raw aphid meat. But as you see in the clip, if you kill it with a spicy weapon, you actually get aphid roast. You kill it with a salty weapon, you get aphid jerky. Using the materials from killing an aphid, you can create aphid slippers, which give a good speed boost in the early game. You can cook consumables like the aphid roast, which fills a lot of hunger, but it does expire. On the flip side, you can create aphid jerky, which does not expire, but it fills less hunger. Lastly, you can use the aphid to create the boost juice smoothie, which increases stamina. Unfortunately, the next bug on our list frequently is found being bullied by red ants. Luckily, all those years of Call of Duty have prepared me for this exact moment. The weevil can be found anywhere in the eastern flood zone, the grasslands, the hedge, around the oak tree, and in the upper grasslands. As with the aphid, depending on the weapon used, killing a weevil will give you raw weevil meat, weevil roast, weevil jerky, in addition to a weevil nose. The most important craft you will make from a weevil is the gas mask which is highly recommended when you enter the haze. You can also create a weevil shield in addition to a weevil roast and weevil jerky. Grubs can be found pretty much anywhere burrowing underground, easily identifiable by these dirt paths. A good place to check is around the oak tree. Be careful though, because it might be a larva, which is not quite so harmless. Upon killing a grub, you will be rewarded by a grub goo, grub hide, and raw grub meat. The materials gained from killing grubs can be used to create a lot of tier 1 items. This includes the entire grub gear armor set, which gives an overall boost to stamina, the larva blade, the weevil shield, the canteen, and shinobi sneeze. Grub goo can also be used as a smoothie base or a meal base. Making our way over to the koi pond, we can find both the tadpole and the water boatman. The koi pond is the only place these two can spawn. Killing a tadpole will reward you with a raw tadpole meat, and killing a water boatman will reward you with a water boatman fin. Using raw tadpole meat, you can obtain tadpole roast, tadpole jerky, decoy bait to distract the koi fish, and liquid gill smoothie, which increases air capacity when underwater. The only thing you'll really be making with water boatman fin are your fin flops when you go into the underwater lab but you can also create Boatman Fin Soup and Fluid Flipper Smoothie, both of which increase swim speed. If you find yourself anywhere near swampy waters, you will most likely find an abundance of gnats. These little guys do attack you, but they don't really do damage, so I decided to keep them in this harmless category. If you do manage to snipe one of these little guys down, you'll be rewarded with gnat fuzz and raw gnat meat. The main thing you'll need to kill gnats for is your first bow, the Sprig Bow. You will also need to kill gnats in order to create the aforementioned gas mask. And if you decide to get into the taxidermy business, bug trophies. The next harmless creature on this list is the crow. The crow can be found perched in many different spots on the map. This includes top of the northmost laser, top of the pagoda in the koi pond, on top of the weed killer in the haze, on top of the water bottle on the picnic table, on top of the fence above the sandbox, on top of the fence above Castle Moldor, and here on the bird bath. The large feathers the crow leaves behind can be harvested with a tier 2 axe. 
Upon destroying these large feathers, you will be rewarded with two to seven crow feather pieces. You can use crow feathers to create a lot of end game items. This includes the termite axe, the crow crossbow, the feather arrow, the mint staff, the marksman cap, the wizard hat, all crow roofing, the simple bed, and most importantly, the pet house. The last and definitely most irritating bug on this list is the scarab. It can be found in the undershed area, the wood pile, the termite den, and the northern grasslands. Now I don't know if it was because I was trying to record, but I have never had such an issue trying to kill these things. You know what? You'll see. Now I typically just use an insect bow to hunt these guys, and before today I haven't had an issue, but it's recommended that you use a crow crossbow, upgraded at least to level 7, the marksman cap, and the sharpshooter mutation, which should let you one-shot these guys. And as you're going to see, it's pretty important that you do. When you start to chase them, eventually they will burrow underground, which is the equivalent of you killing them. You will have to wait one to two in-game days for them to respawn, and they're not exactly common. Now if you do manage to kill one of these guys, you'll be rewarded with a twinkling shell. As you can see here, this is my inventory of twinkling shells in this chest. I gave up on hunting. I'm not doing it anymore today. 